I was recently talking with the Lord Kitchener and I asked him if he wasn't a Calypsonian whether he would be a Pan Man and surprisingly he said no. He said that even though he grew up in Arima among Pan people, he never was inclined to play the Pan, maybe it was a matter of fate, but felt a deep conviction to sing about the instrument because he believed in the ingenuity of it. Well, today Kitchener is the only Calypsonian to give the most musical lip service to the Pan instrument. Here is Kitchener with his latest ditty for 94 performing in New York City, Earthquake. Granny started crying, she complaining too. She said she get ruined, tell me what to do. I have no insurance, I support my parents. Who is going to come? For assistance, I'm left to mourn. Everything gone. Be quick, destroy the building completely. Not even a teacup to drink some tea. Let the tremor have we on the toe. We dance Latin, the vibration shaking up the ground. Them, no, you don't have to worry That tremor is the band competing in the savannah They're still born in earthquake, earthquake I tell them, it's an old break you hear it It's ready games and desperate jam Earthquake, earthquake I remind them, don't be misled by that tremor It's band jamming in the savannah Earthquake, earthquake I say people, can't you hear this with them.
the Grand Master, Lord Kitchener, Earthquake. Well, it was great talking to this legend in Calypso, and I began by expressing my concern about the media's abject irresponsibility of snubbing the Calypso art form. You see, I told him that the Caribbean media seemed to not play enough of the Calypso music, and around the season seemed to highlight one or two songs from an album, and after the carnival season is finished, then the Calypso is actually put in the dustbin. And I said to Kitchener, is he a bit concerned that maybe after he's long gone, the children may not get to know about Kitchi? I've been talking about that some time ago. The, 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 the DJ, as you call them, seem to be looking towards only the carnival type tunes. And they forget the other tunes. And you have lovely, good, wonderful tunes. You know, we, we, we make tunes for carnival, but apart from that, we make good tunes too. Good tunes, tunes with lyrics. And they seem not to want to play those tunes. And people also complain about that. And I think we are losing out on that. We, so, uh -huh. we need the, the, the DJs or the radio station to play the entire, the entire album rather than playing the two hot tunes. Uh -huh. So then <coughs> um, would you say that the work of the Calisonian today is even harder to ensure that uh, this can be accomplished? Yes, it's, the, the work of the, it's much harder today than long ago because um, you see, you're, you're, you find yourself where to compete, you must compose this soca type of music. And it's not easy because to get to the top of the soca music is rather difficult because there are so many soca singers today that makes it rather difficult. But yeah, but you held your own very well at the uh, at the soca mona competition. You made them young fellas look like, I mean, that you could move even some better than some of them too. Well, as, as I said, there's an <laughs> exception in the rule. In the rule. <laughs> Um, Kitchi, the Calypso art form is unique, and mm. um, it's, uh, you, you have to be great to survive in the art form today. Mm -hmm. And you have survived over the years. You have done so many, you have touched on almost every topic. That's right. This is what a Calypsonian should be. Yeah, really. But you see, you see I was composing Calypso from the age of five. So there is, it's, it is something, it's a kind of gift given to me. Give, you, you, wait, 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 wait. You, can you sing a Calypso you composed when you were five years old? I, could, I, I, I can't sing it, but I, I, but I, knew, I know that I compose it. <laughs> I know I compose it. All right. Why do you think you are obligated to sing about the pan? Well, I'll tell you why. When I left my hometown of Rima, and I went into Port of Spain, my resident was in a pan yard. So I actually grew up with the early stage of the pan music. And when, I, when, the, when the pan started, they were playing, there were three notes, Tung Kang Kong, Tung Kang Kong. And I visualized that the, the, this pan music can go further than that. So I immediately composed a song. It's just called The Beat of the Steel Band. With the thought that my next composition about pan will be something higher, of a higher standard. And I went on that way. I went on going higher and higher and higher and brought it as it is today. So I, I, am, I, I am obligated to the pan, as I, as I said, because I, I grew up at the early stage of the pan. I grew up with, all the, with, the, pan, with, the, with, the, with the pan players. And I heard the, the, the early stage of pan music it was very, very, very simple. The, um, when I sang the song, the first pan composed by me, the first pan music in the history of pan music was composed by me. It's called the beat of the beat of the beat, the beat of the steel band. But this was very simple. It was like this. Well, I heard. The beat of a steel band, boys, I can't understand. It was hard to make a distinction between Paul and Bar 20 and John John. That, that is the first steel band song I was ever composed in 1944. And then I went to, 
to do, I went on composing better songs and with more more meaning and, th and more more uh, more melody and better chords and so, and it has risen the heights today, where I compose Pan in A minor and, and Symphony in G and Pan Night and Day. Lord Kitchener on Culture Share. More action coming up. Oh, my God.